Car no, Providence. <laughs> it's the same thing. Rick, you're in Providence, bro. Yeah, I know. Did you know that? Yeah, we're in Providence. In 1976. 76. Yeah, Have I been asleep that long? No, I mean, I wasn't. So, so it's true, just because I come from upstate New York, like, I'm Rip Van Winkle. I was just, I'm just waking up. Uh, this week we got, we, we got talent. It's not just the regular old, old uglies we have on here. Come over in here because so you can be on camera. So you can be on camera. Oh yeah, over in here. Yeah, stand in front of me. Yeah. So what usually happens is we do this every Sunday um, at six o'clock Eastern. And then it's recorded for posterity. And we're doing it at a different time, obviously, noon. Um, anybody watching this video later, Necronomicon was great. And and I'm tired, so Joe's taking over. No, I'll get him. Jeff Thomas, get over here, boy. Jeff, get over here. All right, well, first, this is important because we, we've done this. You really are taking over, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ann K. Schrader, who is Poet Laureate of the convention this time. <laughs> she won't own up to it, but she is our finest poet and has been for decades. Uh, I marvel at her work. I bugged the shit out of her for more and more and more. I was privileged to publish her first collection, The Worms Remember. Thank you. Um, she doesn't do social media, unfortunately. <laughs> so we'll torture her for a couple minutes. So Anne, come on over here. We don't bite too much. <laughs> got anything new out? Interesting? Uh, yeah, um, I've got poetry collection out from Pyrea Press in Australia. Charles Lovecraft is the editor, and it's called Dark Energies, and it's Lovecraftian and dark science fiction combined. And I've got a fiction collection out from Hippocampus Press called Dark Equinox and Other Tales of Lovecraftian Horror. That's Derek Hussey's press, and S.T. Joe, she was the editor. So it's all hitting at one. Let me in. Yeah. Wow, where's the love? And everything, everything hit at once. So, and I've still got Twisted and Dream out of Hippocampus Press, and there's no overlap in the collections. Okay. Well, the people out there might not know what Twisted and Dream is, and I really uh, Twisted like and them. Dream was an expansion of The Worms Remember, and it's got a lot more in a lot more poetry and it also has my sonnet sequence in the Adath time is in there too great which, incredible. which is the space this the space version of the fungi it's all it's, it's 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 my take on it and most of it's in outer space so and that's, that's you're like a nice, on. quiet, normal person who lives quietly in Colorado with a nice dog and a, nice and a husband. really nice husband, you know. And even though you got somebody, a friend of yours, who's always bugging you to like get, you know, social media and tell me to go to hell all the time. No, I don't. <laughs> you don't love me. Last time I told you to do that, you went to Berlin. Oh yeah, sure. okay. I, I, I can't get much farther. <laughs> um, and what are we working on? Um, we're uh, we've got more poems we have to write for um, the next issue of Spectral Realms, mm -hmm. and I've got some others. I've got a story I probably need to start pretty soon because I did tell. Lovecraft easy and it's going to get a story so I've got a story I have to do for that and I've got actually got ideas for one so oh ideas too this yes, is good I have a beginning and an end and somewhere there's a middle there's a middle there's a middle, there's a middle that something happens yes. okay. so that we have be, to figure that out sometimes middles can be very good yeah that depends what flavor you 
Yeah. So that's what I'm working on. Cool. Cool. Well, we're delighted you stopped by okay. because I can't wait to spread this all over the goddamn internet. <laughs> and I mean all over. Well, yeah, for my, oh, my two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's done now, darling. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I have to do something for a second. You Rick, for a second. Rick, you're <laughs> live. <laughs> well, I'm going to plug Pete Rollick's uh, anthology, which also features me. It's Legacy of the Reanimator. Woo! Just came out from Chaos. <laughs> and it's inside it two rare round robins that Robert M. Price did in Cryptic Cthulhu. Trying to find the table of contents with my fumbling fingers. And one was Herbert West reanimated, the other was Herbert West reincarnated, as everybody knows from uh, the trivia night last evening. We have stories like Herbert West in Love by Molly Tanzer. We have some down along in the uh, Round Robins, include Peter H. Cannon, Will Murray, Donald L. Burleson, Charles Hoffman. We have stories by Tim Curran, David Bernard, uh, Ron Shiflett, and Glenn Owen Maris, Richard Lee Byers. And the other, the Herbert West reincarnated Round Robin, has Rod Heather, Brian McNaughton, Joel Pulver, Bob Price, C.J. Henderson, Mike Sisko. And it, I, when I submitted to this, I just, I knew he was going to rearrange, rearrange the stories in chronological order. So I said, I'm going to set my story in the 1950s, so I'll be the last person in the volume. And be the <laughs> final person to remember. And unfortunately, Ed Morris beat me out by setting a story even later. So the best laid plans of mice and men go astray. Now, the talented artists I just met today, take a look at this. Wow. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. It's Sarah Malki. No, it's Sarah Barty. That's her, Malachi is her, is her interweb name, and uh, Sarah Barty from Tuscany. Sarah, Sarah ba okay. Barty, okay. She, she just told her about the convention, her own dime, her own time. No dealer's room, no guest passing. Oh yeah, we're signing. We're like, I'm saying, everybody knows you now. Our Necronomicon 2017. Oh yeah, you gotta get <laughs> okay. involved. That's why I was confused because your signature was with an M, and if you pronounce the name, it seemed different. Okay. And there's also here's another portrait. This looks like something I would expect on Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool to see that. Yeah, huh? that, that's meant as a compliment. Yeah. These are, I bought these. This way, this way. Oh, oh, sorry. I bought these for the nice price of $5 each. Well. Mm -hmm. You got these for me, Rick? You're, I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, you really are in charge of this, but I just want to say something real quick. For those in the, in the room, physical room that don't know, we do this every... Uh, Sunday at six o'clock Eastern. You can go to Lovecraft Easing's website. Right at the 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 top menu, there's something that says Lovecraft Easing Talk Show. You go there, and I embed the video into the page. And uh, I get all the good guests. <laughs> yeah, you do. And then other than that, uh, we want, Joe wants to interview a bunch of people and talk about. We want to talk about how great Necronomicon has been so far. So yeah. Well, I I have to tell a story. Okay. Just briefly. About two days ago, I think it was with Pete, and you it was you text him that you were, were having lunch with Ramsey Campbell and his darling wife. I had, I had the distinct pleasure of having lunch with Jenny Campbell and her sidekick. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I had incredible jealousy and envy until this morning when I had breakfast with Kenny and her lovely sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's bring Jenny up and see what she's got to say. <laughs> That's a good idea. You can bring Ramsey along with you. Yeah, you can bring your sidekick with you. <laughs> 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 so, 
Get out of the way, so yeah. So the important people are on camera. Are on the book camera. Sign before this is over. And this is Jenny Campbell. <laughs> and this is her sidekick. I'm sorry. Did you, what was your name? My age is hard to remember. Oh, mine too, brother. He just follows me around. I, well, we yeah okay. I'll behave. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something about the view or something. But, um. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should say behind, behind our heads is the First Baptist Church. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you can't see that. Uh, so we've had Ramsey Campbell on the video chat, but we were on this side and he was on that side. And, and now we're all in the same place. Indeed. Yes. But so. I'm in all the flesh, as you see. You're <laughs> That's you're what you saw earlier. <laughs> And I was lucky enough to pick up a new book. Oh, yeah. oh hey, that right. I will uh, gladly steal. How do you how do you pronounce it? I always pronounce visions, it. visions. No, I don't speak <laughs> <that. laughs> But I always pronounce it Brychester. Right? Oh, Richester, Richester, Richester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you only buy it for one thing, buy it for the limericks. <laughs> because all my Lovecraftian stories are within this book in the form of limericks. <laughs> For instance, it is not recommended to search for the herd that feast under the church. Their recherche, their recherche cuisine would just turn your face green and would equally make your guts lurch. <laughs> so, you know, you might, have, you, might, you might have a little potential with this writing stuff. Yes, that's right. Yeah, now, now I've become a poet at last. Oh. So, are we working on something new that everybody can look forward to? Yeah, I mean, sadly you can't bring this along with you, but I'm going to be reading for the new novel at, uh, at one o'clock. Oh. Uh, well, actually, Bill Nern's reading, then I'm following him. I'm following the master, so I'm, I'm just in, in his shadow. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a, a Lovecraftian trilogy. Uh, it is called The Three Births of Deo Loth. It's, the, it's all the fault of Pete Trouser at PS Publishing who persuaded me to do a, a trilogy. I've been trying for years and I finally came up with this idea. And the, the first novel is called The Searching Dead. I'm a bit past the halfway mark of the first draft. And uh, Lord knows when it'll be done. <laughs> you seem to be returning to the creations of your early years. First, you had the Kalaki Lion, Deo Loth, who I really love. Mm -hmm particularly in the changer of names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, he's there. He's, he, he'll be in the background and increasingly, I suspect. Well, I don't even know. I've not written it yet. What do I know? I'm just the writer. <laughs> I, I've got a general idea of where it's time. going. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yes, thank you, right. I'm, I am going to return to my old ideas as if I'm doing better because I screwed them up the first time. Mm. <laughs> the rest, last revelation of Blanky sold out. Ah, yes, publishing, right? Yeah, there's a second printing, in fact. Uh, but now there's, there's, it is within this very it's book that has been held up to that. the camera. But this is yet a third version. I mean, I've only really tinkered in the tiniest possible way. I'll tell you why. You know, the inhabitants of the lake, right? Okay, you guys are all pretty, you know, you're better informed than I am, I'll tell you because my memory's gone. Um, what's the lake and the inhabitants of the lake? What's it called? Brick. Brick. It's like, it's like I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember. We see it's not called anything. And this is, you know, I, I, just, I don't understand how I could have got that so totally wrong. It didn't have a name. So, you know, came the last revelation. I thought I'd better give it one. And then I thought of a better one. So that's now in this edition. And now I've finished. I'm done, I hope. And you're not going, yeah, yeah, you're not going to right. reveal what's with the name of the lake is. Obviously. It's not it, Holly, is it? If you like, actually, I thought because of the name I got from was Starfall Water. Um, which I thought was kind of nice, you know. I bet. Yeah. You got you you got a chance to be somebody, kid. All right, man. <laughs> give, give, me, give me time. Give me time. Yeah. Keep working at it. Oh, yes. uh, oh, I do. Uh, I'm still writing here at this very convention. Thank you, every, every morning, six o'clock at my desk. Or oh, uh, desk in the room, anyway. It's pr it's probably good that Jenny has given you permission to keep doing this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm my first editor, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. You said this is a trilogy? That yeah, it's going to be. it will be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Jeff, I mean, of course, Jeff van der Meer has beat me to it. Bastard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, you uh, heard that here, yeah. Okay. Very fine, you, re you should read this, this trilogy. Yeah, the very, Southern Reef. Very remarkable, yeah. very fine. Yeah. Wow, Ramsey Campbell doing a trilogy. 
Who would ever thought that was going to happen? At least of all me. Yeah. <laughs> when approximately do you expect the first one to be available? Well, here's the issue, you see. Um, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll probably finish it by the end of the year. Um, but, you know, I, I always rewrite my stuff a great deal. I mean, more than ever, you know, I mean, these days, I don't know, every sentence, I wouldn't say every sentence gets rewritten, but a lot of them do. And you know, by the time I finish the rewrite, it's maybe 20, 25 percent shorter than the first draft. Um, so you're going to hear the turgid version today that my reading, sadly, because I've not rewritten it yet. Mm. Um, the problem becomes this, you know, that, that I tend to rewrite and change earlier stuff in the, in the novel. Um, but in a sense, a trilogy, you know, is is one long work. So I'm just a bit bothered by the idea that I could I could rewrite the first novel, get it into print, write the second novel, and realize I wanted to change stuff in the first. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just have to have the amended edition. So in theory, at least, it'll be out next year. Okay. Cool. Now, do you handwrite? I do. Yeah. Always. Yes. First draft, pen and ink, fountain pen and an exercise book. Yeah. That's why I'm the one who reads it first because nobody else. Can nobody read else. Can <laughs> <laughs> okay. 1997. I wrote you a letter. Right. And you generously wrote a letter back. I have a frame. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> I discovered that this over here was an E, and that over there was an L. Right. And that's how I, well, that could be an M. It took me two days to read the goddamn <laughs> And it was only four you know, lines you know, long. <laughs> no, no, it's a, you're a brilliant writer, but if you had been a doctor, yeah, you yeah. would have been a magician for oh, Christ's sake. Yeah, because yeah. only doctors could write that bad. Yeah, that's true. Oh, man. Yeah, and yeah, yeah you, it's a, and Brian Lovely, I get a really lovely letter. You can read every bit. He can spell. He can write it right. I thought this thing came through the like outer dimension. It is. It's, it's an unknown language. Have you yeah. ever had a problem with somebody misread something totally? An editor or something? Just like they, they used to do with Lovecraft, read balls for dolls and things. Ah uh, no, no, I was t I was to type it. You know, the rewrites typed, so well, no, 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 no editor gets to read. Except the very first book I ever sent out, Ghostly Tales. I mean, that was handwritten. The only copy illustrated crayon it was. Uh, I was eleven years old. When understand and uh, <laughs> believe me it shows yeah that brings up an interesting question i didn't realize that you hand wrote everything mm. first oh yeah uh do you have someone scan all this in for future generations or just keep a record or is it just all in a file folder somewhere it, it, it's it's mainly in the science fiction foundation library the archive in liverpool okay. university uh, but I've still got piles of stuff I've not even been into them yet. But, uh, but yeah, no, they, they, they'll, they'll be there for people to, to pour over. Although, mind you, the last time I went and had a look, I mean, the, they've got the parasite, and it's faded almost to invisibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody had better get, scan that yeah, pretty soon. Yeah, exactly. It'll have gone, gone. But I can't do that. Yeah. Well, I could do it after the time. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got it right. They, yeah, else can scan. damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I've got to go have my lunch. Okay, I've got to do this reading. Thank so listen, so listen. Hey, my right. pleasure, my pleasure. See you later. Yeah, no, but to the room, to the room. Nancy <laughs> <laughs> Campbell, all right. Brilliant writer, good guy. And... He got lucky. He gets me sidekick. <laughs> Spe you know, speaking of writing, I was just on a panel with this guy, uh, and it, he had this notebook out, really, really tiny writing. I was like, I put away from him, couldn't read it. Michael Cisco. And and so where, like, why is he here yet? Right here. Huh? Like I this. <laughs> I dragged him up. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, you. It's your cheek, man. You got to stand over here for a couple minutes. Over here, darling. It, you used to look this good, Cisco, but you don't even over here. You won't, I won't bite too much. We're live. Who are you? Let's skip to the hot part. Let's get down to like you got a name, baby. I'm Michael Cisco. <laughs> wow! Oh, it's I, I turn out good. No, it's got to be the lie. It, it's got to be the lie of love it thing going back like this with Cisco. Oh. 
All right. No, I am Damian Angelica Walters. That you are. And what do you do? And and you're one of those. You you're like one of those writer types. Sometimes. You know. Sometimes yeah. I yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is your stuff like is it any good? No. I'd say that. I'm watching this shit in my publishing. What do you mean? That I'm publishing good. a mountain of your stuff. I, I'll say it's good. Well, you can say it's I'm good. I'm a good I'm editor. Say it's good. I got a Shirley Jackson I mean, award to prove I'm a good editor. So if <laughs> if, if I say you're good, you're good. Okay. And Datlo so says I'm good. Datlo says you're good. Thank you. Now both of you contributed to the Doom that came to Providence. That's yes. correct. Mm -hmm. I think you have a copy over there. Yeah, we got a copy. <laughs> so we might as well. Plug it. Faster Lynch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Necronomicon Providence. Oh, yeah, what is that? <laughs> TV shows. I don't know what those TV shows are called. They got the, you know. Um, the Doom that Came in Providence. It's the Necronomicon Providence 2015 Round Robin. Um, I didn't bring my glasses. Damien's in here. That, that that young kid we just had here, Ramsey Campbell, he's in here. Um, Selena Chambers. So, so unless you buy that, you will not get all of Ramsey Campbell's complete mishost work in this monument. Good point. Yeah. This is a one shot. Now, this is convention only. There are only 200 copies of this here. And I procured, as editor, two copies to give away for the easy check. Because you're not here and we miss you. So, a couple of people will get one. But that's right. Um, Ramsey's in here. And oh, we got quite a few people to sign it for you. We're, we're giving away two of these to the uh, audience members. Uh, the want one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, Mike. Our, our, my lovely assistant Michael will give you the directions on where yeah. to send this email. I, I just wanted to say, uh, for those who are watching this later, it's live and then it'll be archived to YouTube. But we'll give you an opportunity to. I'm not going to do the drawing today. We'll do it in a few days. Yeah. Because so. you may not home be home. Yeah, and, we're doing it at a different time than we usually do. So and, I'm sure some people. And, and this round robin is basically a series of. Of witness reports. Um, my crazy idea as editor was that we had this convention and a Cthulhuian event that occurred. And it was pretty nasty, you know, only it only occurred for a couple minutes. So we only have X number of dead bodies and X number of dismemberments. Um, and I thought, well, you know, the way all you hip kids are. With your phones, everybody got the iPhones, whatever you call them nowadays. So this starts out with Mike Davis of the Lovecraft D Zine <laughs> at the event as it shit hits the van, starting to tweet. <laughs> right? And of course, Sam Cowan of Dim Shores, which is a great little micro press, he's the one who designed and set our book. And every time I said, Well, I want Mike Davis's tweets to look like tweets. Yeah, I was blown away because I just went did of that. I just sent them texts and he and I mean, not text, you know. We got and, some uh, Yahoo standing back here by the name of Tom Lynch. And, you know, he's had a couple interesting jobs. So I wish I could find it in here. Um, but I said to Tom Lynch, I think this is it. It's like, um, what, you know, a little bit about first responder report. reports. So. Here's like a real police report, you know? There also is an interesting collaboration between mother and daughter. Uh, yeah, there's, there's one of those. Yes. If anybody wants to talk about that. Well, I was leading up to it. My contribution was a letter that was found in a high school trash can. Um, and my daughter did the, I, I wrote the text and then my daughter transcribed it so that the handwriting would look age appropriate. I attempted to write as though a teenager would, and it failed miserably. <laughs> and, and I believe when we were Skyping one time, you said she changed a couple words she to make did. them age she did. I, Yes. So this was edited by like a real teenager. Well, <laughs> she's, she's a little older.
older than a teenager, but she's closer to her teenage years than somebody young and hip that like knows what the hell's going on. I'm like <laughs> knows how to speak. Yeah. And it got crumpled up and then Sam made it look pretty cool. Yes, I crumbled it. I um I put dirt on it. I, you know, cigarette ripped, ash, ripped, really. ripped part of it. And then um then Sam said, Can you mail it to me? And I'm like smoothing it out, saying, Okay. And it was fun. Yeah, it was. So you're in here. Michael Cisco's back there, and we're going to bring him out in a little while. It's in the um, green room or whatever. Um, he wrote something, you know, Michael Cisco. I saw that. <laughs> I think he was referencing your hair. No, the hair goes like this. I, I, I can remember a couple of times outside in the wind and stuff, and the hair, you, you had to be there, man. Oh, I probably know that well. Mike, yeah, curly Mike, hair. Mike has been accurately described by Robert M. Price today as the only man in the world who understands my liking. Oh, that's true. It's I'm, not that hard once you get past it. We'll, we'll <laughs> bring that up. When we bring Mike up here, bring that up because I got a great story about Michael and language. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was there live and in person. So so you, let's talk about your writing stuff here. Okay. Isn't it fun? Mm -hmm. What? Do you cry and when you're doing it sometimes, and do you well, swear at your computer and stuff? No, I don't. I don't swear at my computer. Oh, um, I see. I do both of those things. No, I, I no, I like my computer. I get a little involved. But I do a lot of handwriting with pen and notebook, initially with stories and, and jot down ideas and themes and you know phrases and opening sentences and do a lot of brainstorming with pen and paper, and then when I have a lot of brainstorming and the story is taking shape in my head, then I sit down at the computer. Um, and often I'll write a little bit on the computer and then I walk away and I brainstorm some more. Um, and it has a feel to be one of the, the rising stars. Uh, I, I'm not sure. It feels strange. I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Um, oh, you know I still what you're feel doing. Like, you know, a, a complete no one. And for people to come up and you know, say hi, and I've read your work is is a little is a little startling. It's it's unsettling, not in a bad way, but mm -hmm. I I keep wanting to look around and figure there must be talking to somebody else. Yeah, um, the person right back of me. I hear you. I'm good so, to that. But it's it's a nice feeling. It's nice to know that people are reading my work and enjoying it. Um, we I mean, are. That's what. That's why we do this. <laughs> in theory. So, you know, it's nice. I, that actually, it's, it's my form of. Having a psych a psychiatrist, <laughs> so, he's not doing yes. a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, my I'm psychiatrist. Working. They wanted me to get a whole team of them, but I can't <clears throat> spend that kind of money on people at Shrinkers. Joe, so, <laughs> you have an interesting T-shirt that maybe you want to have there at the camera get a better ride. You. <laughs> oh well, we'll no, we'll get to the T-shirts in a while. We got oh, one of those oh, to give away, brother. Oh. oh. Damien, what so do you give you, away some shit day? Sorry for anticipating. <laughs> uh, what do you have that's come out lately and that's about to come out? Oh, um, let's see. Most recently, as far as short fiction, I had a story um, this month in Apex Magazine called Not My Circus, Not My Monkeys, oh. The Elephant's Tale, which is a very surreal depiction of dysfunction. From and it's a circus and it's the elephant's point of view and that's I don't want to give anything else away but the story has intermissions and um, it was very experimental in style and then forthcoming um, I have a story in this guy named Mike Davis I'm not he's quite sure. have you, have you heard of him? <laughs> he's got an anthology coming out called Autumn Cthulhu I have a story there called in the spaces where you once lived which is um, I don't want to give anything away, but I hope it makes people cry. Um. <laughs> yeah, I told you and Joe um, that it was one of those stories that I received um, that I, it was exactly what I wanted, but I didn't know that that's what I wanted. <laughs> and it was just perfect. So yeah, it's a, it's a very good story. And then, Extremely good story. Thank you. And then I have a story in, this, he's my Vanna White now, <laughs> in Casilda Song, um, that is called, what is it called? A reproduction in acrylic? 
or black stars on canvas, the reproduction in acrylic. There we go. Um, and then I also have um, a novelette that I co-wrote with E. Catherine Tobler, which is um, in Casilda's song as well. And I'm super proud of that one. There's a, the lost, we have Casilda, the lost colony, Jim Morrison and Frank. Um, who else did we put in? It, it was a lot of fun to collaborate. That was my first uh, professional collaboration. It was also um, Ms. Tobler's mm -hmm. first professional collaboration. And and she is the editor of Shimmer magazine, a speculative fiction. And you do a little editing too, don't you? Mm -hmm. I do freelance editing. I'm always yes. curious, how, how, how does the collaboration work? Does one person write the first draft? Or? No, actually how we did it, we brainstormed via email, back and forth and back and forth with, with ideas. Well, what if we do this and what if we do this? And then um, I wrote certain sections, she wrote certain sections, and then we both edited the, the story entire. So hopefully, and I think that she and I have very complementary writing styles. So hopefully the story is, is very, it reads organically. It doesn't read as, oh, someone wrote this section and someone wrote that section. I think that it, should feel pretty seamless and we're and we're giving away two copies of this and i should say that yeah, it's it's that's a, a really great collaboration and it was good that you had a visionary genius editor that would like <laughs> see fit to do that you know that's important you know well if not for you it would not have happened that's why i do this i like being the pop -up. He actually asked us for a collaborative story, asked if we could do it. And um, after went. a few emails back and forth between um, E. Catherine and I saying, oh my, can we do this? Can we do this? And we ended up creating something that pretty I think is pretty good. strong. Yeah, what so what prompted that request, Joe? I read one, one and read this one, and I don't know, just somewhere start to go together in my head. It's like, oh, what if this one and that one <laughs> kind of started? That'd be pretty so that they would be very compatible together. Yeah, it just smelled right, brother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to tell you technical terms. <laughs> well, we also... Um, you, you, you don't want to sit in a room when I'm working, trust me. Um, I, I like this bumpkin facade. It's pretty damn good. You can get away with a whole lot of shit. Um, I think, Joe, you knew that she and I beta read for each other. And I know, too, so. I know you guys beta read yes. for each so other. So you're really with familiar each with work. each other's work. And there was just something here. And there was, because I had a story from each of them for the book. And it was just something there. And it was just something there. And it's like, you know, to me, it's all jazz. And I want to hear this bass player with that alto player. And it's like, you know what? I can, I can fit together. So we'll ask, and either they'll bite or they won't. Well, all the but sections they, every that time are beautifully I ask, written, they, they're e they, <laughs> they don't turn down to me. Yeah. So, all right. really cool. Yep. And, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And what was it? Wait a what was the name of your book again that they need to go read? Oh, Sing Me Your Scars is a short fiction collection oh, that yeah. came out in March from Apex Publications. We just had a, a panel on the uh, future of weird fiction. Uh, there were a lot of notable people on that panel, a lot of very, very knowledgeable people on that panel, some influential people on that panel, some editors on that panel, mm -hmm. and her name came up and came up and came up. It's a great book. Go to Amazon, take a peek, buy the thing. <laughs> the big sis. Come on now. Is he, still here? Is he sleeping? Who's sleeping? Did he, 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 he sneak out? He's not down. He's oh, not down. Oh, man. Yeah. I'll kill him. He's been swallowed up by the abyss. Oh, man. Okay, no, maybe he had something. I, I did say just pop in for a couple minutes. Yeah, I, I think he actually had to be somewhere. Yeah, he probably oh. did. He, he didn't want to talk to you. That's what I heard. <laughs> probably, he's probably offended by you keeping him waiting. All right. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's do the Thomas brothers separately. Separately. How about yeah. Scott? Because okay. he hates. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's a good guy. Who was here with his lovely fiance.
Welcome to Proverbs. Howdy. Thank you. How are we doing? Welcome to, to and you too. I, I, I live in your hair. <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> All right. I was an American before you were an American. <laughs> so, uh, he was born yeah. long before. Uh, no, no. Only a few you may not be an American really much longer. Only a few months before me. I know. There's some people out there, and they're like, mm -hmm. who's cool for talking to? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> me? Um, yeah. well, I'm Jeffrey's little brother. <laughs> Jeffrey's little brother. Thomas is little brother. Little Scotty Thomas. Don't we have a copy of this kid's book? Uh, actually, I think they're all at the dealer room. They should have they, 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 the publisher doesn't have a copy. It should be visually imprinted on people's brains by now without a picture. All you people out there, you want to know what it's like to be a writer? You go to convention and you're all hopped up in your sight. And your publisher didn't bring your fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> it's downstairs. No, actually. And they're selling like hotcakes. Uh, Scott's written something that's called the Sea of Ash. Mm -hmm. Where, just a thumbnail, no spoilers. Bro. It's hard to describe. It's, it, people are saying it's Lovecraftian. It's uh, it's weird fiction. It's it's uh, about uh, a New England that is mysterious, right under the common surface. There's all types of. There's several characters we focus on from different time periods the stories are juxtaposed and there's a lot of weird extra dimension dimensional stuff there's a lot of my my love of new england and, and uh, my aesthetics in there it's it's just darn fun and everybody <laughs> loves this book yeah yeah and a lot of writers love this book i got a huge hug a couple of days ago when i saw cisco haven't seen each other in a couple of years. And then he said, have you seen Scott Thomas? I got, I got, I got to see Scott Thomas. Man, I see a Ash. Did he read it? Cool. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, I, that's high praise. I think, before. And he loves, he loves the book. He thinks it's incredible. Right? Well, I'm well, pleased. For those I'm delighted. Who don't know. It's a very unexpected reaction. I'm yes. flattered. For those who don't know, it was two years ago at Necronomicon 2013 that Jeff and Scott gave me a copy of a book called The Sea of Flesh and Ash, which I think they can describe how it came about better than I can. But essentially, uh, I read it on the plane ride home later on, and I really loved, loved both stories. Later on, I talked to them about uh, uh, it, the, it did not get a lot of press, I guess is the nicest way to say it. it, it just I don't think it got the attention it deserved. And just because my personality, not that I don't love Jeff's stories, I do, and but we've talked about this, I really gelled with Scott's story, The Sea of Ash, and I talked to both of, both of the brothers about republishing this, and Jeff said that actually he already had plans to publish The Sea of Flesh in a, in a collection called Worship the Night, and so I concentrated on you know, talking Scott into Lovecraft Easing Press repub republishing The Sea of Ash. And mm -hmm. I'm glad it's gotten a lot of attention because it deserves it. So. Yes, yes. It wouldn't be having the attention it's gotten or the praise or or, or have reached people who, who resonate with that type of work if it weren't for you. So I'm indebted to you, my good friend. Well, I'm glad it has. And, it, <laughs> and you've written a lot of other stuff too. So. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And if you if you go and friend him on Facebook, he puts up his old poems all the time. They're excellent poetry, but thank you. And I know about poetry. That's true. That's not that's not joke. And this whole weird fiction community, it, Pulver is notable for poetry. From you, I thank you, huh? Master Wordsmith. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna do like a sequel to this, right? Yes, I have some other some. Oh, and like other projects I mean, be, be before. before that, nothing you know really to discuss. Uh, but uh, I, I am going to definitely write a sequel. Do you have a tentative title for uh, what the sequel? I don't. I've you know I've played in my mind a little bit, but I'm not really. 
All right. You think in uh, autumn? How, how do you think we're getting this in a year? As Might soon be longer. as I can get rid of some pesky obstacle projects which are blocking me from doing what oh, I want right. to do, which is the sequel. And yes, and, and I do have a story in Autumn Cthulhu. Yeah, I, the reason why I bring it up now is because um, if you're a fan of the Sea of Ash, it's, it's, I guess the best way to say it is it's in the same universe, in the same setting. Mm -hmm. Not setting, but same universe. I did very consciously uh, try to make it Sea of Ash-esque. Yeah, and there are a little, a few nods to the Sea of Ash in it, actually. So, cool. Mm. So yeah. So we're really happy about that. Thank you so much. And I'm pretty psyched to be on Autumn Cthulhu TLC with your brother. Yeah. Cool man. Yeah. So you got anything else you want to tell the nice people out there? You know, no, Joe. Uh, well, there was the one about the travel no, bike not, and no, the. No, 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 no. <laughs> We don't do that hardcore Sorry. shit here. <laughs> you know, this is a family show. You know it's great. Years we're on this doing this thing Sunday nights and Mike's is a family show. It's a family show, so I never said fuck. I never said and then we had Libby Llewellyn on and like within five minutes, oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy Koja emailed me and asked when she would come like, Can I swear? And I was like, sure, you can swear. And the and the he ladies said, yeah. <laughs> he didn't he didn't bother to tell them it was a family show and which is probably cool because now we can just say what we want. Yeah. I was just trying to keep you toned down. <laughs> so, so you got a brother that he kind of plays yeah, with yeah, words yeah. and stuff too. He's huh? my favorite writer, uh -oh. Jeffrey Thomas. Maybe we should like bring him over and see if he wants yeah. to talk to us. And, and before I go, I would encourage anyone out there who doesn't come to this to come to this event if they can. It's, it's, it's awesome. You, you get, you get to meet all these cool people. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Oh, and he is the devil. My big brother. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, yes. We love you. Likewise. Hey, Rick. Hey, buddy. So, so you're Jeff, huh? Jeff mm -hmm. Thomas. Mm -hmm. The Jeff Thomas. It's good the, to have Mr. Somebody wrote the on my. Account. Mr. Punkton. Yes. It's good to not just have a cardboard cut out of his. <laughs> yeah, it won't might be much different. <laughs> Jeff Thomas mm -hmm. is the creator of Funked Out, along with a lot of other fine, fine stuff. But yes, I'm guilty. I'm partial to Funked Out. And so tell us about this Jeff Thomas guy. Uh, about well, the cool stuff he the does. Cool stuff. The cool stuff. Some of the cool stuff I've done recently was I. I have a story too in our, our round robin, the Doom that came to Providence. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, I'm in there too. It's an excellent story. Thank you. It should right. probably stand alone by itself. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I wrote it at work. I'm I should have been working. I'm <laughs> great. You great at it. And uh, and I, I also have a story in Auto Cthulhu that um, I edited and uh, you know Scott. And, other cool people and um next year i have a book coming a collection coming out called haunted worlds from um dark renaissance books and uh in 2017 i will have a centipede press will be doing a collection of my punk town stories tentatively titled the punk town omnibus and uh so i'm writing a little bit of new material to go in with all the, the tons of old you know the reprinted material that will appear in that and yeah, Punktown is going to be a role-playing game in yeah. the near future. Yep. Yes. Yes, that's, that's in the works. And there's some surprise projects regarding Punktown in the works that I, I can't announce right now, but there's some really exciting other offshoots of Punktown that cool. are in the works. like hearing that. And up and coming, other stuff? Uh, that well, sh stories in various anthologies, and uh, some that you may be aware of yourself. You know, that me, yeah, I might yeah, be personally you, aware you, of you, some you, of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 those yeah. are exciting projects. I think they and, might uh, be stories here and there uh, will be appearing in anthologies. I'm leaning. I, I've been for a while now. I've been writing more short stories, and in the past, I, I had some novels. I have about four novels kind of stuck at the halfway point right now. I just haven't. I it's not that I'm stuck in them, it's just that I haven't had time to to uh, work on them because I keep getting invited to these cool anthologies. Yeah. 
Yeah, I pull breach of pain. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're preventing me from finishing my novels. Yeah, the title just <laughs> the title just went out of my head, but I posted about this last week or so, where uh, several Amazon reviewers were talking about one of your collections that it's one of the best examples of Lovecraftian fiction. Which which one was that? That's yeah. Unholy Dimensions. That, Unholy was, Dimensions. That, that came out in two thousand and five from Mythos Books. Although um, I released on my own a digital version of it a digital, for the Kindle and whatnot for uh, it was a couple of years ago, and so um, yeah, I had some kind of use. Mm -hmm. Was was that the collection? Was I married to Shaga? Yes, I, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is one of the most practical uses of a shotgun I've ever seen. In <laughs> That's just the way my mind works. Dirty mind. <laughs> That's what I would do with a shotgun. And like I had said previously, I was on the, the future weird fiction panel and with some notable, notable people. And it seemed to me your name came up in that room. <laughs> yes. Two thunderous applause. <laughs> and I do mean thunderous. I had a one man standing ovation in, in the, in the, mm -hmm. with a Scott Nicolay. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So basically, what I'm saying here is he's got an Amazon page, a lot of books on there. There's a lot of great books on there. Um, buy the Punk Down collection if you don't own it. And some other things I've been involved with, by the way, would, is that I've recently edited a couple of books, oh. such as this one, written by certain the collective works, of some of the collective <coughs> works of Joseph Pulver. I was the editor of that, and uh, of, of another one. And it's another. called the Protocols Ugliness, mm -hmm. and that will be coming out sometime next year. Mm -hmm. So that was my Yeah, privilege. and it was great, and thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I was, I was honored to, to, be, uh, to be so you, you two are in a unique position. You edit each other. We have. <laughs> but it, birds of a feather, you know. I mean, it's a, it, this this community is very incestuous. Um, <laughs> in, a, in a good way. But in a yeah, in a good way. Wait, the only good way. This is not a competition. This is this is a celebration of of the literature. Um, the, those who see it as a as, as a competition, those who want to piss in the pool, get out, goodbye. I, we're all here to have a good time. Yeah, we all prop each other up and move some. Yeah, each I, I, I want to read great work people. by other people. I know what the hell goes on in my brain, you know. We inspire each other. You know? Yeah, it, that's it, you know. Um, more Every time you put a piece of wood on, on that bonfire of weird fiction, it gets a little bigger, it gets a little brighter. Yeah. And it illuminates all of us. Yeah, all of us. There's a lot of darkness out there, and we got this one little bonfire. So as much wood as we can pack on there to make this thing big, mm -hmm. that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Now they 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 got a. There's going to be a reading in here, right? So we're, are we? What kind of time we got, Rick? I think we've got about nine minutes. Okay, so we got. We'll do this quick, and then we'll do that quick. Um, Jeff just held this up. It's my new collection, A House of Hollow Wounds. We're going to give one of those away. And oh, look at that! Pulver even did art, like John Lennon. You know, <laughs> John Lennon can do it. I can do it, right? Mine sucks as bad as his did. And then we have two copies of Casilda's song to give away. It was my rare privilege to get the all women writing chambers, all new stories. Uh, I am very proud of the stable of contents. Cheshire Burke, Linda Rucker, Helen Marshall, Damian Walters, Nicole Cushing. Ann K. Schrader, Maura McHugh, Nadia Vulcan, <laughs> Molly Tanzer, S.P. Miskowski. You know, with, with Casilda's song and with the doom that came to Providence, why don't we give one away to people watching this on the web now and later of each and one here in the audience? We could easily do that. Yeah, so. Did you give out numbers or something? Or? No, I figured everybody that wants 
if you want to do that came to Providence, raise your hand and Joe will point blindly to somebody. Uh, <laughs> well, no, all right. We'll do one give, We'll do one giveaway on that side room. And we'll do one giveaway on this side room, okay? There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll think of a number from 1 to 20. And 38. <laughs> that's exactly the number you can't win, though. And the person over there who's closest to the number wins. Great idea. Which one are we doing first? Which one is that side? We'll, we'll let Rick pick which goes to what side. There you go. Because we, we need him to do something other than just think. Okay. What are you talking about? He's the encyclopedia. I know, that's what I mean. This, this goes to the left side. Okay, so we're giving away this over there. All right, so the song. All right, so you're thinking of a number between 1 and 20, Joe? I sure am. Thought right. of it. So what, what do you, what do you, what's your method? What are you doing next? <laughs> uh, each one of them says a number, and the one if somebody hits it, they automatically win, and we stop. All right, if you want to sell this, if not, then. the one closest to it wins. If one is on this side and one is on that side, I'll just do any, mini miny, mo or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess then if you want to sell the song over here, raise your hand and Joel do numbers. All right, so what's your number? Seven. Okay, what's your number? Twelve. Seventeen. Okay. What Seventeen. Oh. There you oh. go. Oh. I was. Oh, I don't want to tell them why seventeen is like my favorite number in the teams, do I? You just don't pick seventeen from this. So, from this time. I, mean, I don't want everybody to know that if you're giving a contest. Seventeen is the number to pick. All right, my favorite. So we're going over this side, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Why don't you pick a different number? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Or 17's out of play. Between 80 and 100. <laughs> it's the same, right? 20, right? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Between 80 and 100, if you want Doom that came to Providence, then raise your hand over here. So, Tom? 82. 82, what's yours? 92. Uh, Kim? 93. 87. 87. 97. All right, who's closest, Joe? Can His hand's calculate? still up. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Put your hand down, damn it. <laughs> Who was the closest? You said 87. It's 89. <laughs> there's, only, there's only 200 of those, but if you're watching this an hour later or here and you're like, you know, you really wanted one because they did do a great job on this book. We did get permission to reprint it in some format in Lovecraft easing. Not sure exactly what we'll do. This is really the the awesome edition, but if you want to read it, it'll be in some format in the future at Lovecraft easing. So. Right. We're we're gonna figure out as much of this technical stuff as we can and present it as close to this as we possibly can. And there is some supplemental material. There's four um, uh, photoshopped images by Gage Prentice that we didn't have room to use so depending on what happens we may put those up as well Gage Prentice did some marvelous marvelous uh, images of what looks like Lovecraftian beasties patrolling the uh, streets of Providence so do they have a poetry thing going on in here soon uh, soon any other thing we're giving away and we all, all we have is a small, I'm sorry, is one of these ex pulver t-shirts. So. Are we giving it away in here, or what do you want to do? Well, we can do, we can do it in here, but it's only a small. All right. We'll I do pick, that. Let's do I, that. That's less than mail. <laughs> I, pick, I pick the number between one and a hundred. One in a hundred? Yeah. <laughs> Just shout out All a right. number, whoever's. Someone's going to give it 75. 77. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I said one in a hundred. My nature split it in half. <laughs> sorry. And, and the t shirts, t shirts can be purchased at Scurvy Inc. You're, you're giving this away too to a yeah, digital audience. Those right? three go right, there. So if you want 
if, if you're watching now or in the next, let's say sometime this week, this is, what is this, the 23rd? August, Sunday, August 23rd. Just send an email to um, Lovecraft Easing Prizes at gmail.com with the book's title. That's Lovecraft E Z I N E P R I Z E S at gmail.com. And in the subject, put either a Casilda song or the doom that came to Providence or um, a house of hollow wounds. Uh, and you can go for more than one. And I'll use random.org uh, probably towards the end of the week to. They can go for more than one? Well, you can't win more than one, it, oh, but you can ask for yeah. more than one. Okay. Yeah. So let's Fine. say let's say I pick you randomly. That, that's for, what I meant. I, yeah. yeah. If I pick you randomly for the doom that came to Providence, but you've also thrown in the hat, your hat for a Casilda song, then then you're out for a Casilda song. So, right. If that makes sense. Yep, it does. All right. So are we done? So they, they need the room, don't they? They need the room. So we're done. All right. Thanks, everybody. Peace.